Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> good evening and welcome everyone to our regular council meeting of November the 13th. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to begin by extending a warm welcome to all of our new councillors here and returning councillors, staff, and of course all of you in the audience. And I wish to begin by formally acknowledging the traditional territory of the South Nation upon whose lands we are gathered this evening and whose community we look forward to forming a, a very strong working relationship and continue to work together uh, as we uh, make decisions that encompass both land and the ocean that surrounds us. Um, new councillors, welcome to our first regular council meeting, first of many within the months and years to come. Uh, tonight's agenda is one, a couple of things here. First off, um, there's always been this comment that the mayor puts the agenda together, the mayor approves the agenda, and then it comes forward to council. So I'd like to share that that doesn't happen with myself or with anyone. The agenda forms out of the administration of the district office. Staff put it together. They uh, electronically hit send, and I receive it the same time that all members of council and the public do as well. If I were to approve the agenda, it would actually just slow down the process. So I think it's the case where uh, this comes forward in that way. Uh, of course, within this agenda, there are different items that come forward just through the general business of the municipality. So for those of you that are new to us, um, I'm grateful to have you here. However, if you feel at any time in the agenda that you would like a more fulsome report from staff to come forward on anything that is within here, please feel free to make a motion to postpone Tabling is, a, if you made a motion to table, it would be still we would need to deal with it within tonight's meeting. Postpone it would be to a future date and time. And so, of course, any member of council at any time, new or returning, always has the ability to do that. It still requires majority of council to, uh, to approve that, uh, but that's something that, you can, keep, that uh, you can certainly keep in mind as we go forward. So on that note, um, I know that there is a few new business items that have been requested that we add. Uh, so when you look at tonight's agenda, there will be three items. One of them is to add uh, a verbal on the Festival of Trees. Number two would be the Mayor's New Year's Levee. And number three would be the Santa Parade. And so council, as you approve the agenda, would like you to approve it with the addition of those three items, please. So moved by, by Councillor Parkinson and seconded by Councillor Loggins. Councillor Parkinson. And I also had a notice of the motion. Do you need that right now? Or no? no, if you could, um, I'll just ask you to read it out uh, when we get to that particular section. And um, we'll take it from there. All right, so I'll call the question. All those in favor of the agenda? Opposed? Councillor Beddoes, are you opposed? No, I'm in favor. Just okay. Hold it okay, very good. Thank you very much. That's carried unanimously. And councillors, um, please note that you'll need to turn on the microphone when speaking so that we can all hear you. And of course, that'll pick up through the camera as well. And I'll remind you as we go along. Okay, so first off, item six is adoption of minutes. We have the regular meeting of September the 24th and, October the f and regular of October 1st here as well. We can move them together. Moved by Councillor Parkinson, seconded by Councillor Beddoes. I have a couple of amendments. Questions or amendments? Um, Councillor Bateman, go ahead and please turn on your microphone. Yes. September 24th agenda. Um, page 4 of 12 for page 8 of the agenda package under Bear Awareness, Souk Wildwise, which is actually Wildwise Souk, to be clear. And we have um, $7,000 to continue with a waster management project. That's a waste management project, okay. just to be clear, not a waster. And then we move on to, excuse these fine points, but this is a less fine point, uh, under Council Verbal Reports on page 12, of the September 24th agenda. Councillor Ray here is reporting on attending the Vancouver Island Regional Library Board. Uh, estimated cost for building is 7.5 million, so the word not should be removed. And uh, the Shimanus Library, uh, 
as she explained, I reviewed the tape, is, is about um, a third the cost. It'll come in at 2.7 million, and it has yet to break ground. So just those points uh, and all as well. Okay, maybe on that note as well, uh, where it says in line with a recently completed library in Shemanus, there's a three in recently. Yeah, that too. So perhaps that line should be struck and said uh, yet to be break ground because Shemanus is not completed. Is that correct, Councillor Bateman? It has yet to break ground. Yet to break ground. Okay. Anything else in the minutes? All right, so move adoption, please. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 7.1, we have a delegation this evening. Uh, so joining us tonight is the Rotary Club of Souk on a kiosk update, Mr. John Topolinski. Welcome. Uh, good evening, Council. And if you could please turn on the microphone. There you are. Thank you. All right, good evening and uh, welcome. Uh, a lot of uh, very familiar faces I see around town, a couple newbies that I've yet to meet, but uh, we look forward to uh, four very good years coming up. Uh, in 1999, the Rotary Club of Souk designed and installed the info boards that you see as you cross the bridge coming into town. Uh, the panels originally displayed all of the service clubs uh, as well as the different churches in Souk and the times and days that they, were, uh, that they met. Uh, at that time, the kiosk was a gift to the community and similar to the Rotary Pier and the skate park, the district agreed to maintain it. Over the past 20 years, uh, some maintenance has been done to it, but uh, however, the elements have taken their toll and the sign is now in a, a major state of disrepair and uh, is uh, an unsightly thing to look at when you first come into town. The, also, the information on the sign is no longer valid. Most of it is up, out of date. Uh, rather than see this kiosk dismantled, uh, Rotary would like to assemble a committee of other interested service clubs, as well as the district, to come up with a design to uh, revitalize the sign, update the information displayed on it, possibly go a little bit more high-tech because there is power available to the site, have some type of a digital board on there that can be updated on a regular basis as information changes. Uh, this will become useful to our community as well as the tourists that come to visit us. We've been in touch with the Lions Club and uh, have found that uh, they did a fair bit of work with the district several years ago to come up with a plan to uh, have this uh, board uh, revitalized, but uh, for whatever reason at the time, uh, nothing came of that. So we would like to attempt to get this going again. Um, it's because of the fact that the structure itself is sound. It's just the panels, the information that's on there is uh, no longer valid and also a bit of an eyesore. We would like the council to direct district to remove these panels, put them into storage until this committee can come up with a new design uh, to be put on the board to refurbish them and also to come up with the funds to take care of this. That's basically all I've got to say, and I'm open for any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Toblinski, and many thanks to yourself and all the Rotary Clubs over the years have, who have contributed so much to our community. So just so that I'm uh, confirmed or um, in order here, so first off is looking for uh, council to direct staff to remove and, and store the items, and secondly, for a member of council to join you on the committee, the, the entryway committee, is that? It, it, could be a member of council or it could be someone the, that you uh, designate from the staff. Okay. Um, a question over to staff, um, to Mr. Blackhall. Is this on district land? This is all district land? This is Ministry of Transportation land? It's Ministry of Transport land. Ministry it's, of it's Transportation highways. land. Okay. Yes, Your Worship. It's not on district land. And, um, yeah, I would just, we are running out of space to store stuff. We have stuff in our office all over the place that we have no storage space for ourselves other than if we're going to maybe rent another st storage container and place it at the works yard, we could do that. But currently we don't have, we got stuff, as you know, down in meeting rooms that just piled up. So, But is this, uh, the, does this particular, do these panels and the like need to be stored inside or could they? They've been outside for 20 years. Another year is now. not going to damage them much further than it already has. No, okay. So in this case, um, 
it would be the case of um, for council to consider for staff to dismantle and store it on the on the Keltasen work yards. Councillor Loggins. Thanks, and thanks for bringing this forward. Um, it will be nice to see it, I guess, redesigned. Um, but my question would be, um, I don't know the structure of the sign itself, and if do we need to remove the panels? Like, is it are the the things that are affixed to it are they stuck on there, and, and can they be removed individually, or is it the whole panel that has to come down? The the, the panel itself would have to come okay. down. And um, sorry, uh, Sarah, if you could throw the pictures back up for a moment, please. Uh, they are just affixed to the post. The the posts are solid cedar. Uh, they've been in the ground for, as I say, for 20 years, and uh, they're still in excellent shape. Uh, it's just the uh, the panels themselves that are out of date and starting to look quite weather worn. So, the, just for clarification, the the uh, words that are on there, those are not able to come off of the panels. They would just be. They would have to be off. removed. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We, depending on what uh, this committee comes up with for design, we may not even use the panels, but uh, I would. Hate to see them just get tossed away and just have to, you know, purchase them again. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Councillor Beddows? Yeah, uh, Mr. I hope we get it right. Polinsky. Polinsky. Topolinsky. Sorry. Topol I know he is John, so <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's really, really uh, simple. My just understanding of what you were saying <laughs> that you were interested in partnering with the other service clubs to exactly. do a joint sign. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding is uh, I know the Souk Lions had put a great deal of work into it a couple of years ago and actually had Department of Highways permission uh, to make some changes. So uh, I look forward, if it's all okay, that you come back with a, a plan of where to go. Uh, I think it's long overdue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Other comments or questions? So first off then is I'll be looking, um, oh, that council direct staff to remove and store the rotary kiosk panels until such a time as a redesign has been completed. Moved by Councillor Parkinson. Is there seconded by Councillor Beddows? Uh, so any questions? So we will be then directing our staff to take these down and store them in our works yard. All clear on that? Very good. Councillor Parkinson. Through your worship, and I hope that someone from the Rotary will be there so that they're doing what is expected of them when they take it down. You let us know when it's going to happen. We okay. will be there. Thank you. Yep. So our staff can just reach out when we have something timely sorted and the like. Okay. All right, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. For the second one, um, for both council and for Rotary, uh, we're in the process of getting a report on all the various uh, liaison appointments. So um, I'd rather just wait till we have that report come, but we can certainly add this to that list unless you're needing someone immediately. No. Okay. So I imagine um, either at our next regular meeting or the one in December, uh, we have other appointments that we need to make so we can add this and then that way we're not just making a decision here and, and not looking at the whole context of those. So if, if council is okay that we just, when we receive the report, we'll have this added to that report and we'll, we can then report back at that time. That's terrific. Whatever length of time is required. Our biggest concern was that with the new council, um, looking at that sign and the, the state that it is in, we were afraid that uh, the council might just decide to bulldoze it. And okay. so we did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yes. Okay. We would, we would certainly phone you first to that <laughs> pen a Thank decision. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Topolinski. So, staff, are you comfortable I don't, that you need a resolution from us that we want uh, this particular liaison added to the list? You got it? Good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so item eight is our public question and comment period. So this is for all items on tonight's agenda, including the correspondence. Please note to members of the public that there is a two-minute time restriction, and if you could please give us your first and last name, your address, and as well as the agenda item to which you're speaking so we can refer to it within our agenda documents. And please turn on the microphone. 
and welcome. Ellen Lewis, 5526 Soup Road. I'd like to address a minor text amendment as it's stated here in your uh, agenda. I don't believe this is minor at all. Uh, it's a major change to our community, and, uh, and I'm opposed to this. In the past, historically, uh, local government has dealt with issues with fines. Uh, this is not a non-conforming. This is an illegal property. You're wording a historic and non-conforming. Historic is not in any of the documents in any of, uh, uh, neither, it's not in the Local Government Act and it's not in uh, any of the municipalities. So it doesn't really have a meaning. Historic, as I tried to explain before, historic is um, what was happening in our communion, community since that land was there and it's always been agricultural. And it's non-conforming is, is not uh, actually descriptive. It's illegal. It's not a non-conforming. Non-conforming is when a uh, land use has been changed by government and has never been changed by government. It's been agricultural for since 1921. So I think that this has to be, this, uh, this shouldn't be done at all. This, should, this, is not a, this isn't a grandfather to issue. It's not a non-conforming. It's illegal. And to change the amendment, or to change the text, <clears throat> changes an entire community. We don't know what other properties are in this, in the Gateway Residential that may possibly affect others. We're told there's, there's a number of people who are non-conforming or, or uh, not operating under, under our bylaws in uh, Gateway Residential, but we're not told how many they are. None of the neighboring properties know who they are and they can, they can then apply for a temporary permit, which can be six years. And meanwhile, it changes the entire official community plan. And we're going to be looking at our official community plan in 2019, and I think this is unfair to the people who will be looking at it as well, and unfair to yourselves. <clears throat> I just want to say that um, in the past, I mean, I've received a fine, a $200 fine for burning, allegedly illegally, but I wasn't. Um, I did dispute that in court and win, but nobody had a problem writing me a ticket out for $200. Uh, one time we were also told that we had to pay a $2,000 fine or six months in jail for a sign that was under CRD. Ridiculous. But anyway, there's, there's, those things are there, and we have, you have within your bylaws, you have the opportunity to shut this business down. I'm not saying shut the business down, I'm saying move the business. I'm sorry, not shut the business down, move the business. It's a good business, but it's in the wrong place. And there's, I just also wanted to say, right next to that business, there was a uh, property that had applied to be in, uh, have a daycare center. That property is turned down. There's another property in the gate, B residential was applied to have a gate, uh, daycare center. They were turned down. They applied legally and were turned down. And that, those businesses are not as detrimental as this is to this, pro this area. And I really would like council to reconsider. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lourdes. Derek Lewers, 5526 Suke Road. Welcome to the new council and to returning council. Thank you for uh, putting your time in. Um, this council has the opportunity to end this whole process tonight or begin potentially dealing with this issue for your entire term, eating up valuable resources. You guys are not bound by the decisions of the previous council and in fact, the highest votes for re-election went to the two councillors that opposed this operation continuing and the one councillor that was the strongest supporter of this uh, business is currently not sitting at that table. You have to ask yourselves, why are we doing this? We've had four zoning bylaws as a district of Souk, two OCPs plus laws prior to incorporation and never have temporary use permits in the residential gateway area have come up before. This can only mean it's never been a concern throughout our history and the only reason it's coming before you now is to pander to one party who has been breaking the law for a decade or more. Temporary use permits, as we've stated before, by design are meant for temporary use prior to the use occurring, 
not to allow backdoor access to zoning or other bylaws. The request before you due to this one property is not because of some general public outcry for change and is coming at the cost that the district is taxpayers for the benefit of one individual. If you vote in favor of changing the zoning bylaw, we will, at the taxpayer's expense this time, have to hold another public hearing and once again bring all the issues to the table that have been brought up and potentially dividing our community further while calling into question the validity of suit bylaws and its enforcement and how it's done. The last public hearing impacted about 900 properties as a result of trying to fix this landowner's uh, issues of his own doing. Now with this proposed amendment, we are impacting all of Souk with this never before used definition of historic non-conforming. As Mrs. Lure said, this term does not exist anywhere in any municipality that I've been able to find and anyone that knows me knows I can be very resourceful when it comes to the internet. If you find, if, even if you make this amendment, the future of this property to change the zoning is restricted as I said at the public hearing. It's too small, despite what the lawyer said. I've proven that with the land titles office. The shape is a panhandle, the building and size and locations. So what is the benefit of giving false hope of future zoning and wasting council's time and staff time to continue to go backwards and undo decades of previous good work and digging deeper hole by going out of our way to amend, modify, or make special conditions and definitions to the benefit of this one illegal business and land use. Despite being requested by bylaw to remove the residential trailer on this property over two months ago, the owner has not complied and the trailer still remains on site. So this just gives you an idea of what has been going on despite all the concerns that have been brought up. No action has been taken and I don't think the landowner thinks that anything's gonna happen. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lures. Other comments or questions tonight, please? Are there, this is the only time in the whole agenda that the public will have a time to comment. So just for anyone that's new. Can I, I'm calling for the first time speakers, Mr. Lures. Are there any other first time speakers? I see someone. Oh, it's on. Yeah. I'm Brig, Brig Lowe from uh, Woodlands. I came here for a meeting on a proposed zoning change, and then I talked to my friend about his concerns. And th yeah, th these are similar concerns. Um, Sorry, which which item, Mr. Mr. Briggs? I came. You postponed it, but I came here for um, a property on Woodlands Road that I live across the street from. Okay. Um, it's a residential place and it's five acres and they're zoning it. They're asking to, to build five houses on the five acres. So I think is that coming? Yeah, it's, you've put it over, but um, I know the property in question. I think that it's really important that we have uh, the ability to have mixed uses in this town, but I think you should look at the uh, area around this and each place should be very specific to the environment it's in. Um, I've been working for years in the industrial complex up Butler Road, which for some reason is not in Souk District. Um, they've been building warehouse after warehouse after warehouse. And I've noticed in this area that I live in, very little gets built. Mm -hmm. Uh, there hasn't been a single house built on Woodlands. There's only been one built on Harbor View in the last 12 years. Uh, even this property you're talking about has had ad hoc renovations put on it, but there's, there is really no active development in this entire area. And thankfully for the Souk First Nations, there is something going on down in Cicino. So I'd like just to bring to attention that this area needs uh, some attention needs some sewer or something to it's it's everybody that comes to soup drives through this area mm -hmm. and um, and that's all thanks thank you very much Dark Lewis 5526 Souk Road that sign that was brought up by the rotary fantastic idea and through my years of coming to council meetings, uh, I know there's been various proposals. I would just like to put out there to consider that Souk doesn't begin at across from the castle, that Souk begins at Connie Road. 
and I think it would be short-sighted to put any information sign on the side of the souk where, you know, a quarter of the souk's population doesn't necessarily drive by it every day. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to use it public funds and we're going to make it an information sign for everybody, especially if we use technology and uh, digital readers, that maybe it goes by Connie Road where the current fire danger rating sign is, and it could be benefit to everybody in souk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lures. Okay, seeing no one approaching the microphone, I'll move on in the agenda then. And item number 10, we have recommendations from the Affordable Housing Committee. Uh, so here, um, there has been the discussion that council could resolve into a committee of the whole, just to have a more... Oh, pardon me, okay. I've written all over that, so I missed it. I'm sorry. 9.1, pardon me. Um, bylaw 726, zoning and bylaw amendment, one that people were just speaking about. Okay. I'll turn it over to staff. Okay. Thank you, Council, uh, Your Worship. On the screen is a snapshot of a portion of the official community plan land use map. The OCP amendment that was adopted on September 24th uh, impacts the uh, orange area known as the Gateway Residential Land Use Designation Area. Uh, these are the text amendments that were adopted. The approved amendments allow for temporary use permits on residential lands for historic non-residential uses, be that commercial and industrial, on residential properties. Up until September 24th, temporary use permits could only occur on land zone previously zoned commercial and industrial. The amendment also included the addition of an action item for the gateway residential area to review the need for highway commercial land use designation adjacent to Highway 14 to accommodate historic uses. A temporary use permit may be granted, as uh, Ms. Lewis has noted, for up to a maximum of three years with one renewal. It is Council's discretion if they choose to grant it for less than that, that max time. A temporary use permit may also include conditions such as, but not limited to, specifics around the layout and aesthetic of the site, operating hours, and buffering from adjacent neighborhoods, or neighbors, sorry, may not include new construction for permanent structures. Council adopted the OCP amendment, oh, sorry, the, the, the Council adopted OCP amendment on September 24th, offers time for Council to more strategically assess the gateway residential area through a full OCP review in 2019 and in the meantime permit through temporary use permit if council so chooses the legal continuation of non-conforming uses. Okay. Oh, okay, one's died. Given the adopted OCP amendment, a housekeeping amendment is now required to the zoning bylaw in order for it to align with the OCP. The bylaw before you is for wording to be added to part three general regulation section 3.33 3, 3 of the zoning bylaw. The zoning by lists a number of areas where temporary use permits may be issued and therefore additional text must be added to section 3.33 to align with the official community plan. The wording that was provided was provided by legal counsel to the District of Souk staff. Um, I'd like to just address one comment uh, from the public regarding the use of temporary use permits. Uh, they have been used to address existing uses, and I've learned recently uh, the city of Victoria has used temporary use permits to deal with their existing cannabis retail um, businesses, so it, it isn't uncommon to do that. And that is the end of my presentation, if there are any questions. Okay, Councillor Beddoes. Uh, yes, uh, to, to the chair, um, this is, to me, a very complex, it's been going on for some time, and in order to give it uh, due consideration, I would like to postpone uh, this action until especially the four new councillors can come up to speed on the past history. Uh, I would not like to deal with it tonight. I'd like to postpone it, make a so motion to postpone. A motion to po postpone, but to, are you also looking for a staff, like we need to s decide on, we can postpone and yeah. as to sort of setting a date as when that would happen. So I would like more information from more staff. More information, yep. Okay. Thoughts from other members of council or questions? Councillor St. Pierre, then Logans, then Bateman, I think. No? Well, yes. I was going to oh, second no. Okay. motion. Okay, so Councillor, I will come to you and <laughs> sequence. <laughs> 
Councillor St. Pierre had his hand up, and then I've recognized Logan's and Councillor Bateman. Go ahead. And microphone, please. It's possible I might be asking for too much and that maybe what I'm really looking for is a report from staff. But I'd like to know, uh, according to my understanding of what I was looking at, um, the amendments of the OCP are already in place. There's already a process in place for temporary use permits in the Gateway Residential. And what we're left with here is a situation where the process for application for permits can go forward, but we have a legal quandary where the zoning bylaws don't agree. Could you confirm or deny this rumor? Through your worship, that's a perfect synopsis of the situation. It is uncommon to have um, anything in a zoning bylaw specific to temporary use permits. Typically, your OCP would deal with that, but in our situation, the District of Souk has in their zoning bylaw a section in our general regulations about temporary use permits. I'm not sure of the history of how that came to be, but because in order to be consistent with our zoning bylaw, we need to add this text in order for it to not conflict with the official community plan. Because as it stands, if someone were to uh, want to apply for a temporary use permit, the OCP says yes, go ahead in the, in the gateway residential under those criteria. But if they look to the zoning bylaw, um, it, it doesn't support it because the, there is text specific to. Okay, so just to so clarify for myself and maybe for the public, what we're looking at here is a situation where the application process is going to go forward regardless whether we anybody wants it to or not. That's already been decided by previous council, so that's going forward. And at this point, we need to make sure we're not twisting in the wind. Um, through your worship, I would I would be very hesitant to take a temporary use permit forward if the zoning amendment didn't occur. Okay. And that came from legal counsel as well. Right. Councillor Logans. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to make a friendly amendment that we include a date in here to respect uh, the the um, motion. Sorry, the original motion. Okay. So perhaps to the next council meeting or the one after, but not into the new year. So by year end. So I would say by the um, December. At the very latest, uh, we have a meeting next. Two weeks, two Mondays from now, and then we have one scheduled in December. I don't have a calendar in front yeah, of me. December 10th? December 10th? December 10th. So, say. Through the chair, I could, I'm willing to amend my uh, motion to accommodate that date. Okay, so you deem that to be friendly? Okay. <laughs> to the December 10th regular council meeting. Okay. And Councillor Bateman? Well, Microphone? Second. I was okay. going to second that motion. Okay, so you're seconding it as for discussion as, as it's been for discussion. Okay. Yeah. Good. Would you like to speak to it now that it's been seconded? Well, you just seconded it. So yes. In addition to the staff report, there's an awful lot of information already out in the ether. We have a we can review the. I think it's incumbent on us as councillors to review the material to date. Sit sit again through two and a half hours of public hearing on the video replay and uh, be in a better position to, uh, to make a clear decision to okay. either continue a process that seems to be unfolding or um, take an opposite tact. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bateman. Mr. Beddoes or Councillor Beddoes, would you <laughs> like to speak to the motion? No, I, I, I agree with Councillor Bateman. Um, there, there's been a lot go on and for four of us that are new to come in and, and just jump in and make a decision that it's going to impact that very large section of our community uh, would not be prudent for us. So I, I personally need more information. Okay. And I suspect staff will give it to us. Ms. Campbell? Um, if I may, can I ask just for um, some more direction on what the further information might be just to help um, if I, what I need exactly to add to this? Is it more just a summary of the previous decisions I think if if you're able to create a timeline that this happened this happened this on this date this these sorts of things occurred uh, council um, any council resolutions that have occurred there and any legal opinions that council would have received through staff or any staff reports so this may fall some of them may fall in and out of camera, so I'll leave it to staff to make that determination where it falls, but and maybe to consolidate any 
staff reports that would have been provided so then everything is in one place and then of course there is the public hearing uh, package as well so it will be quite a quite a large package of material and um, some of it is available still through iCompass but then this way it's all in one place I think it's important that everyone is looking at the same information and not and while you can google this and that it's if we're all referring when the decisions are made to documents in front of us that are itemized as opposed to pulling something out that nobody because otherwise one person sees it you have to share it with everybody else as well so that we're all looking at the same table of contents or the same materials together in one spot is, is that good councillor Log logans um and if i may through you just add uh any consequences of voting one way or the other uh, because I think <clears throat> what I'm hearing in the public and what I'm hearing at the table today is confusion around how a vote for or against would affect uh, both the bylaw and the OCP yeah that'll be good um, councillor Parkinson through your worship to staff I would like to see a list of all the properties that are legal non-conforming illegal non-conforming historical what which one which properties are we looking at the only one I know of is the one that we're talking about so there are no listings of uh, the, any other properties and we are including 900 properties in this zoning to change all the way from Roche Cove to the bridge so that's affecting a great majority of people and I for one do not want to see our town look like not that there's anything wrong with Callwood, but having businesses coming all the way into our town. I don't want to see anything like that happening. And to have this take place, I think, is a detriment to the greater majority of our town. So. Okay, the motion is about getting a staff report, though. And that's Ms. what Ms. I would Campbell. like. I would like to see which properties are included in this. Because if we're making this rec recommendation for one property, then I don't believe this is the way to do it. Okay, back to staff, to Ms. Campbell, and then Mr. Blackhall, then Mr. St. Pierre. So council's asking that staff provide a list of non-conforming uh, uses, illegal, which is non-conforming, um, that maybe are not, have not been reported, and put that in a public report. You can't. We are complaint based. You're not, you know, and that'll be part, yeah. I think, of the report that would just need to be stated. Mr. Blackhall? Uh, thanks, Your Worship. And further to that, uh, we have no way of verifying um, the completeness of what would be considered illegal or et cetera, because if they haven't applied for a business license, we haven't really got any idea what's going on on a particular property so yeah councillor st. Pierre microphone please I was hoping that the report might include uh, the benefits of actually making the change the risks of making the change uh, alternatives for example fines were suggested you know so on and so forth are there alternatives to moving forward in this way and what would happen if we actually did nothing Okay. Okay. Is everyone clear on that, Councillor Beddows? Yeah. Just uh, through your worship to uh, staff, uh, I would also like you to look at is the the way you've uh, phrased it in uh, B, uh, temporary use permits of historically non-conforming non-residential uses may also be considered in the area designated gateway residential and official community plan. Um, I go back to the original motion which said only commercial, it did not mention industrial. So if the possibility, could you look at how that impacts where we're going? Um, could you specify which original motion you're speaking about? Uh, that was the motion on October 1st. Uh, October 1st, Council adopted bylaw number 72440-12218, a bylaw to amend the Fisher Community Plan bylaw 210 to allow for temporary commercial use permits within the Gateway Residential Land Use designation for historic non-residential non-conforming uses. So I just want that to be noted that that says temporary commercial uses and not industrial. 
Thank you. Councillor Parkinson. Through your worship. So I take it that we would not get a list of the properties that are illegal, non-conforming, but so that to me that means that we are looking at one singular property from what we are doing and including 900 homes into that for one property. Why wouldn't we just take out the one property and just look at that instead of including everyone? Um, before Ms. Cam and maybe I have this answer, um, there is the, the report that listed off the reasons on spot zoning. So I think should you include that report, then then it would include uh, the, that as an option and why or why not council should, not, should or should not pursue that. I don't recall all the details, but I think that staff had recommended against it as well as our solicitor at the time. But uh, if you just to have those staff reports together, then I think that would be helpful. Councillor St. Pierre, now I'll call the question. <clears throat> I was just wondering whether or not uh, having the permits in place and so on and so forth, I mean, obviously we're looking at an e illegal situation here. Uh, it effectively makes it legal. Uh, does that actually <sighs> take away any of our purview in terms of dealing with it in the future because we've legalized it at one point or? Through your worship, that may be a, a legal, like a, a lawyer question. Um, a temporary use permit just makes it legal for the time that it's approved for, one, two, three years. Um, and then after that, they have to resubmit, and then only once after that they can do that. And then it goes back to being illegal. Yep. Okay, Ms. Councillor Bateman. Yeah, I, I just want to acknowledge uh, the supplemental agenda here with uh, Jen Smith, former Councillor Smith's comments. Um, you mentioned lawyers, and uh, she has cited some case law here from the Fraser Valley Regional District um, decision of 2005, uh, which kind of threw the cat among the pigeons in my thinking, um, given that I had thought that this case, um, there was a, a measure of equal culpability on the district's part and on the operator's part um, in the specific um, case and um, the former for not enforcing the bylaws, the latter for for effectively flaunting them to a degree. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious if in this report it could include um, some thoughts on, on the case law to this point. Okay, maybe count, um, staff could have a look at that and if it's and and then just advise accordingly. Maybe the question's been answered already through some of the reports um, or similar or different, but we can get there. Yes, Your Worship, uh, we, can add, we can certainly review the um, correspondence and, and address some of the points within the staff report, also points that have been brought up by um, the lures, for example, mm -hmm. um, that I've met with on a few occasions um, regarding the, um, the concerns they have that may or may not have been considered, but just to put it all out in the report as a Q&A kind of material. So. Yep, very good. Okay, anything else from any member of council? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question then. All those in favor, opposed? And that's carried unanimously, thank you. Okay, so item number 10, uh, reports requiring action are the recommendations from the Affordable Housing Committee. So at this point here, I'll be looking that <laughs> that council move into a committee of the whole for discussion of item 10.1, the recommendations from the Affordable Housing Committee. Is someone prepared to make that motion? I'll move the motion. Yeah. Councillor Logans, is there a seconder? Councillor McMath. And speaking to it, Councillor Logans. Thank you. Um, the committee was just hoping that we could have uh, a bit of a committee of the whole discussion so that we can have a bit more uh, fulsome debate on the topic. And also we do have members of the committee who wish to speak on the items to give a bit more background and, uh, and a look towards the future. So uh, that was kind of the thinking behind moving to committee of the whole. Okay. So that's been moved and seconded. So I'll call the question then. All those in favor? 
Opposed? That's carried unanimously. So now we are council sitting in committee of the whole. So in this case, um, if you were to move something, uh, there is no seconder required, for example, and we can just have a bit more um, discussion and also invite members of the public to speak on this. So I'll hand it over to Councillor Logans, please. Thank you. Um, one thing we were hoping as well is that we could resolve back into regular council before yes. any decisions were moved, because then it's just kind of... So it's just to, it's up to of course the movers but <laughs> well or another thing too is that we could move them all like you could move them in committee of the whole and then council could consider them all as a block right yep yeah it's totally I was just saying there's options yeah but yeah totally okay open. very good um, but what I'm hoping if that's okay with you is that I can just quickly uh, summarize this uh, uh, Ms. Everts was helping on the committee as well, so she can quickly just say she's available for whatever comments, and then uh, our committee person who's here to present could say a few words, and then anyone else who might want to. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yep, go okay. ahead. Um, so, yes, basically, um, I am chairing the Affordable Housing Committee, and we um, were deciding sort of what direction we wanted to take as a committee in order to make the largest impact in the shortest amount of time since we only had a few months to um, move things ahead. So kindly, uh, Ms. Everts has put together this summary and um, it is, I just want to make it clear, it's not typical for a committee to bring forward a staff report. Uh, however, it, we just found that there was a lot of background information that needed to be brought forward and uh, a lot of it was information that was held by staff, not necessarily from the council members. So um, this document does a great job of summarizing everything, um, but I'll pass it off to Ms. Everts if she wants to add anything and then uh, of course to our co committee members. Good evening, Your Worship and Council or Committee of the Whole. Um, I don't have anything to add. I'm just here to uh, answer any questions. I, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. I, I will underline or underscore that housing needs reports are going to be a legislated mandatory thing every five years. So we would be a little bit of ahead, of ahead of the curb, but it looks like the first housing needs assessment that we have could be adopted as our first one. And then every five years, we would subsequently need to um, do a new report and uh, publicly um, adopt it and put it up on our website. So I have a question on that. Uh, given that it's about twenty-five to thirty thousand, say, and then needs to be done every year, is the province providing a grant of some sort to offset that? I believe there is some grant funding um, that hasn't been made abundantly clear on how, like, what you need to do to get that. But I can follow up with more information on. On that, at this time, we have enough in our housing reserve fund to fund the first report, uh, and we can make sure that we have contingency to continually fund those um, through the committee's actions as well. Okay, I would recommend that um, just to check in with both the province and the UBCM on that, because if this is going to be a requirement that the provincial government and I don't disagree with it, I think it's a good plan. But if they're making it a requirement, I feel that they should be funding it some or part or all of it every five years or they should do it I don't know like otherwise maybe it doesn't get done in every community but at some point it's I think that's reasonable Councillor Logans yes and we did discuss that um, one of the concerns from the committee uh, is also that we need to take action immediately on mm -hmm. a lot of our policies and bylaws so if we wait for this to become uh, legislated within the next few years, we're going to be receiving this report in four or five years. So we need the report now. Yep. And although there may or may not be funding, and we certainly can look into that and see where I think the bill 18 was in third reading or something at this point. Yes, third reading. So it is moving along, but um, we don't really want to get stuck in a situation where we're waiting for funding and waiting for movement yeah. from the province in order to get this done just because of the position our towns in or no I, and I yeah. completely agree with you on that and that's why I supported it when it came forward the last time I just think that even though we're done we should still make a you know make an application when those and those 
do come to help offset it and you know we, we are at a crisis point so we need to move so I completely support that but just because we're funding it I think we should just also want to keep an eye on what is available so we can apply for it at that time mm -hmm. yeah um, this is a question for um, mr. Blackhall would could we add the need for the housing reports annually to the um, what is the word term of ref terms of reference for the housing reserve quite easily okay. yes we and we've um, discussed some of this at the uh, committee meeting there is and and staff have already said I think about the grants that until the legislations they're really we don't have the ability to apply right now um, so if council wants us to do this right now we'd have to use the reserve fund monies for it and then we can get into the stream of the grant applications we do have enough money in the reserve fund and we can make sure that the reserve fund has an ongoing um, source of funds for these in case we don't get the grants yep okay councillor parkinson three-year worship how much how much funding do we have in the account in it three-year worship to councillor parkinson um it's on the third page of the report it's one hundred thirteen thousand three hundred thirty dollars and eighty one cents Thanks. <gasps> okay, other Thank you. Comments, Councillor Logans? Um, no, I just wondered if uh, now might be a good time to invite the committee yeah. up and then, Go ahead. of course, any other questions. Good evening. Um, I'm just one voice from our committee. We have a very involved community group. Sorry, can you please introduce yourself so oh, I know how to address you properly? <laughs> I know you. You don't know me. I'm Lorna Clark. I live on French Road North, and I'm uh, a member of the Housing Committee. Uh, the uh, Affordable Housing Committee is a community-based incentive to change, and we've embraced a lot of ideas. We've had a lot of really good direction from staff and from Ebony. Um, and good ideas of our own and the recommendation that we are putting forward to enact this task of doing an affordability study is the culmination of everything we've discussed so far however we don't feel the committee's work is done with this particular study um, there's a lot of work to get done after such a study is done should it be approved of course uh, a working environment uh, with every concerned group of, of the city uh, to get this put in place considering all aspects of the city like the official community plan the trails the parks everybody needs to be involved in how we go about implementing the results of this study um, you have a very broad-based group of people interested in devoting volunteer time to getting this done and I would really hope that the council would approve us carrying on into the next four-year term or whatever term you want to assign to us um, we do good work and we'd like to continue doing good work okay anybody want to ask me anything thank you very much for your good work Ms. Clark and to the committee members as well other comments councillor Logans do you have other committee members that are speaking or? Um, yeah, there's a few that are here. Yeah. So, yeah. Ellen Lurs, 5526 Road. I'm, I'm also a member. Um, uh, I was thinking too, in this case, uh, for immediate action, because we we're talking about different things, that this is a case where temporary permit could be used, I believe, staff, if the, you were to put in um, housing. A temp housing in, a, in an area for uh, low cost housing if it because I know it's been discussed so there could be a temporary use permit used here while the OCP is going on to see if it fits in the OCP as well correct am I correct in that I'm not I don't follow like so well you could like say if you like, want to put housing um, say right here beside your building if you wanted to put housing in there, there could be a temporary permit use issued for there to put housing in, immediate, immediate housing for, uh, 
for, for people, uh, for a temporary use, or for, um, and then talk about the OCP if it be a permanent use, for instance. So in three years, then everyone, if it's like, no, we don't want it, then we tear it down? Well, if everyone well it's still with the temporary use permit, you still have to go to council. It still has to go through council, right? Yes, the temporary use permits do or don't. I'm just, maybe get clarity. Sorry, through your worship. Temporary use permits are for commercial and industrial lands on commercial and industrial, in ex with the exception of the OCP gateway residential, where you can do commercial or industrial on not on residential lands. So There's, you wouldn't... You can't use a temporary use permit for housing. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Now we know. Councilor... <laughs> Good. Councilor... Are you, is that your comments, Ms. Yeah, uh, that was okay. just uh, to deal with things immediately, how we could... Because yep. there's there's two. You have to deal with immediate issues, and you have to deal with long-term issues. So how do we deal with it immediately? So okay. those are some discussions that we were having. It, it, could, it could be campgrounds, could be uh, changing our bylaws, because I believe right now, uh, for instance, in the campgrounds, you can't camp year-round. I don't believe we can in our zoning bylaws. No. I don't think they allow that. It's temporary. It's six months. So those are some immediate fixes, but those are things that we can look at for immediate fixes. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lurz. Councillor Logans. Um, I just wanted to follow up on Ms. Lurz's comments. We uh, did discuss what we would be doing moving forward as a council in the interim between now and, or sorry, as a committee, uh, between now and when the report comes out. The report would create uh, more um, vision around what exactly would need to be changed for bylaws and policies. So we wouldn't want to attack those until we received the report so that we could create a plan for how we might look at those. Um, but in the interim, there are some things we can do. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I agree that we discussed those particular items of changing bylaws to accommodate um, some shelters or anything like that. We haven't looked at that yet because we don't have the information that we require and we're hoping that comes out of the report. But in the interim, we are hoping to meet with BC Housing and other housing representatives um, so that we can have discussions around what best practices are happening around British Columbia um, and how we might be able to work with the report to create some best practices here as well. And also uh, in the interim, we would look to see if there are low-hanging fruit, but my hope is that the, the committee can be a, um, um, a liaison between the community because there are many groups looking at different ways to solve homelessness and affordable housing, but um, we can speak with uh, different community groups who are doing things immediately and making immediate changes in the community and just um, even creating committee of the whole discussions and, uh, and inviting them to our meetings to meet with BC Housing, et cetera, so that we can kind of be that in intermediate piece and, and make sure that everything's flowing in and out of council as we go through that process of getting the information for the report. If that makes sense. Yeah. So the report, <laughs> meaning the 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 affordable the housing report. Yes. So just so that everyone knows, though, that with an election, all committees are automatically dissolved. Yes. So right now, the committee would need to reestablish itself. Yes. Okay. And so we are hoping that council will see value in reestablishing this committee right away, so that we can start moving things forward, um, and also. Actually, one question I have for you is uh, the terms of reference for the committee would have to be changed, and of course, new people would have to be um, sought out. And we have had groups, so I guess my question is what the process might look like on that, uh, because we have had groups come forward that weren't not able to join the committee previously, but they would like to join them, and they would be really valuable. Um, from outside of our community and also inside of our community. So in terms of process, because we've asked staff to put together a report of a committee report to come to an upcoming meeting that would list off sort of all the various committees that we've had. So what you could do is take the, the terms of reference that you had, make any changes to them. There's also, I see in here, 
uh, staff resourcing. So if you have a sense of what that staff resourcing might look like now that you've sort of gone through sort of round one with this committee and then provide it to corporate services so then they can add it into that other report. Yes. So okay. I know it's not as immediate as you might want it, but it's two meetings from now? <laughs> yes, two meetings from now I think we can deal with. Um, that's fine. I think getting started in the new year would be fantastic, and we yeah. can have a new terms of reference uh, by that point. Um, so even if we, uh, in principle, um, agree to continue the Affordable Housing Committee for now, that might be nice. <laughs> um, and then we can get going on that. But. Okay, Sorry. member of the public. Oh, I'm a member, of the member of the committee that's on the a public member of the public on the committee. I want to speak. microphone. <laughs> yeah, I've got my notes here. <laughs> um, my name is Britt Santowski, and I uh, just want to give a bit of one thing that we're frequently asked is to define what we mean by affordable housing, mm -hmm. and that is on a spectrum because it goes right from homelessness to affordable renting to affordable home ownership. Uh, Time is of the essence. So for me, even waiting two meetings, that's a month, and we're going into winter and homelessness. And I mean, you know, it's, I, I know that we're a slow moving machine. Um, but it's also, we're at a very unique time with the uh, new council, with the provincial government, and with the federal government. Things can change quickly with an election and we've kind of got a year that is golden where we can where funding is available the province is making a lot of funding available and they're working in partnership with the federal government so i really uh there's a sense of urgency here both short term long term and uh yes just to echo what um, councillor Log logans is saying uh there are people who found out that the committee was happening um, and they would be valuable uh, members on the committee as well. So if it could be opened up, that would be great. Thank you for considering. Okay, thank you. Other members of the public that are on the committee, public members of the committee? <laughs> Loretta Deutscher, 7026 Wright Road. I am a member of the committee as well. And something that came to my attention when I attended a meeting that was held at the Baptist Church regarding issues of compassion. One of the words that came up that I think it would be worth looking at our definition of, of affordable housing, the words that were used there was obtainable housing because 30% of a person's income for a lot of people is beyond what is reachable by many people. And again, I, I really implore us to think about the urgency that's out there to house people now and that money's available. We have heard Andrew Moore speak to that very passionately, that there's lots of money available from the provincial and federal government. Um, it would be really sad to lose that. So I thank the former council and this council for consideration of obtainable housing for people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Deutscher. Uh, Les Haddad, 6846 Rosalie Place. Um, I was sitting beside the lady that gave the presentation a number of months ago from the Habitat for Humanity, and it seemed like a really a great situation where they're coming in. Souks are really a big uh, volunteer organization kind of place, and I was really sad that it actually didn't come to fruition. And I just hope that whatever was the roadblocks that actually caused them to pull out, that those be addressed. So next time an organization comes and says you want to dump, you know, 10 or 12 homes right in the middle of Souk where it kind of needs it, that it's a smooth process and they don't back out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Logan, or actually Parkinson was first, sorry. Councillor Parkinson. Through your worship, I was just wondering, do we have anybody on council who actually does write the grants, like for the affordable housing monies that are available from the government? Because grants have to be written for this amount of money. It's not just going to, we can't apply today and get it next week sort of thing. So there's applications, so who, who writes for the grants? Well, typically that if it would be the same, I believe, as the SPA committee where if there was a grant proposal, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. No, <laughs> that's good. Um, I imagine, though, that due to the complexity and, and requirement of um, information from staff that we would probably bring it first to council and discuss it because um, it may or may not require a bylaw. I don't know exactly. But, um, I mean, it depends on the grant. It depends on the information. It may go to staff. Do you it mean, like, what it, if there was a forward. UBC... If, if there was like a UBCM, like, I don't what do you know mean by, what grant, what do you mean by grant? Councilor Parkinson speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Through your no. worship, we were just told that there's all kinds of money from the provincial government, from the federal government. Um, we have to ask for that money, so there would be a process by which we have to do that. Well, this so would we be... would need someone to be writing that grant so that we can receive the money. That's all. This would be like a housing project, so like that's where we would work with those particular partners. So I think if the district decided that we're going to do this on district land, then our staff would apply for the grants and do it. Um, in the case of, say, McCullough partnering with another group, then it would likely be McCullough, and we might write a letter of support in, in that regard. Or if it was like the Hope Center and St. Vincent de Paul, they jointly submitted a grant request together and attained those, and we wrote a letter of support. So that's where it would just vary, but uh, in terms of the public comment, like yes, there is grant money available from, well, you could even include the CRD in terms of housing, the Housing First Initiative, and so it's having the, you know, a project identified in an appropriate area and then having all the various entities. And if it were the case that um, nobody, I suppose, then it would come to council and the request would be that we don't know how to write this grant. Can you please direct staff to help us write it or something? Right? Does that make sense? That's the right? it, okay, yeah. very yeah. good. Mr. Blackhall? Thank you, Your Worship. I'd just like to say we, we're lucky to have Tanisha here on staff mm -hmm. with us. Um, she worked with McCullough, and of course, she's familiar with how these projects um, come to fruition. And uh, the, the grant, and Tanisha, correct me if I'm wrong on this, the grants, the, fu the project financing um, tied with the government funding kind of. Um, puts it into that 30% thing versus an attainable thing. So um, that's kind of why you get these projects that have minimum income levels, et cetera. So. Got it. Okay. Go ahead. I think, um, and then Mrs. Lors, you're a public committee member, would like to comment again. Go ahead, though. Um, I just wanted to quickly address another, uh, um, something that Ms. Deutscher had mentioned, which was the, the affordable versus obtainable. And one discussion that the committee did have was changing the name of from, it's not a big deal, I can put it in the terms of reference when it comes back, but changing it just to the housing committee um, to address mm -hmm. that. Yep, yeah. yeah, that would be a good idea. Yep, yeah. okay, Ms. Lures? I just wanted to say that uh, the committee really could use the help of staff, and I hope that there'll be staff support on the committee. Ebony's been trying to do the minutes and the and running the meeting and it's a little complicated to do that because it's ideas come up and she's trying to write something else down. So, so we really would like to have staff report, support for this committee and for all committees. Yep, and that's the request that I'm asking uh, okay. councillors to Good. make is to put that into the staff, uh, or pardon me, into the terms of reference when you submit it to staff. So in this case, you'd likely want to note that you need administrative support as well as, and I feel they should all have that because these meetings are public, they need to be advertised, uh, they need to be you know, held, the minutes need to be kept and recorded, so those sorts of things is where admin staff can assist. And then also in terms of um, having the expertise uh, what would be appropriate or applicable in that nature, not just for this one, but for all the committees. And then we want to ensure that we can actually make them all happen appropriately and our resource properly. That helps. Yes, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I echo what you did just mention, and in terms of uh, timing, one of the uh, concerns that we had as well was that it actually takes longer for staff to read through my minutes and try to mm -hmm. figure them out and decipher them than it does to, to have stuff there. So as long as we can fit it in with this calendar to make sure, um, and perhaps what we would even do as a committee is make sure that uh, we work around staff's availability. Yeah, and that's why with any committee, not just this one, is really to consider daytime hours and uh, to also maybe just 
talk to staff in terms I mean obviously this this room would be available but if it you know there are meetings in other meeting rooms so it's we run into those conflicts but daytime uh, works best for those reasons so not just for this but for others Councillor st. Pierre I was thinking that in terms of the urgency that we're dealing with it would be interesting to actually tap into our staff but also anybody else who has any ideas on low-hanging fruit I mean we can wait for a report you know that's going to take months or you know possibly longer to get into uh, but our frontline staff uh, and the people that actually work you know in the, in the nuts and bolts of it are going to have some ideas right off the bat as to things that are actually achievable and could be maybe done more quickly yeah uh, just because <laughs> No, and that makes sense. And I did hear Councillor Logan's um, sort of state that that's where I'm looking for some sort of way to move on with some ideas in the interim until a formal committee has been struck as well. So, uh, but very good point. And that's why having the staff present, using a delegation, would be good. No one, had, oh, sorry. no one had asked the question about how long it will take to get such a study completed. And... Um, from making some calls and speaking to the two other groups that have done these at six to eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how long the proposal call takes for expressions of interest in doing the study. Uh, so we're trying to attach a timeline to our work as well. So knowing how long it takes council to get that process going is part of our timeline. It sort of varies um, if like here we had already looked to sending out an RFP and that our earlier discussion here is to rescind that and to change that amount. So usually once that gets done an RFP goes up say within a week and it could be posted say for 30 days uh, but then it would depend on uh, what response we received and sometimes we our staff will um, extend RFPs because we aren't receiving a response and then if sort of nothing comes in then of course it can come back to council like look we're or people are saying this or hearing this or the like so then it varies we do okay. post stuff and not all the time do people are available and I imagine with every municipality jumping on this there could be quite a demand on the resources that are available right mm -hmm. now at the same time that that um, was one of our committee concerns is if we don't act quickly to get the study at least started we may end up being on a list <laughs> yeah and not very high up on the list the study yeah. itself does not commit us to anything it just gives us valuable data information mm -hmm. on which to base sound decisions and also fosters really good community relations um, so obviously I'm in favor of getting it going right now and the committee issue if it's going to like this is all t together in one proposal the continuation of our committee as well as getting the study going and if necessary could we separate the two so that one doesn't suffer at the expense of the other like getting the study going is by far the most important part of what rec we're recommending. Well, my intent here is that we'll just move through them the, these individually. When I when I said oh, okay. to Councillor Logan's earlier, is we can, they they can all just be moved individually, and then because Council will will go move out of Committee of the Whole and sit again as Council tonight, then we could just endorse okay. them as a block, depending on how the debate at Committee of the Whole goes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry, since we're still at Committee of the Whole, I just yes. want to. I don't want to deter the importance of all of this work. I think all, all staff agree that this should be a, a priority. I just I don't want to um, mislead council in terms of the the level of staff time it will take. We have two planners and myself to be writing reports, taking minutes, grant writing, and RFPs take a lot, like the RFPs for Lot A that went out and for the two master like master plans they took almost a month to prepare okay it does take a lot of time and on the shoulders of someone who's also doing other day-to-day -day work so just keep that in the back of your mind yeah and, and no that's fair I just I was looking at it that we had already started this process at council I don't know what date it's just the amount was not high enough so that's where you know I'm sort of not like okay you know we've sort of started We've started walking, Council has started walking down the path, but now it's it's just the timing of things. Councillor Blackhall. Yes, Your Worship. Mr. Uh, Blackhall. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I got promoted. 
Um, I just wanted the UBCM. I just I uh, did look at. Uh, they're looking at spring of nineteen for even sort of being ready for applying for the grants um, for the needs assessment. So just if we want to go before that, then we're going to have to go on our own. So. Okay. No, I think that's fine. I'm just that's good. I'm just saying, like years later, if the province is expecting this, they should fund it at the same time. That's just me being an advocate. Yeah. Um, Councillor Logans or Councillor Bateman, pardon me. Okay. Yeah, just some random thoughts here. Coming out of the uh, the nonprofit and freelance writing sector, thirty five thousand dollars always seems like wow, that's a lot of money. Uh, and yet, clearly, this is what's required to be in the game. You know, the game is uh, building BC Community Housing Fund. The BC government's is an investment of close to one point nine billion over ten years to develop fourteen thousand three hundred and fifty units of mixed income affordable rental housing for independent families and seniors. So we need to get our share. The the housing minister announced today uh, forty nine hundred new mixed income rental units in forty two communities, a dozen of which are on Vancouver Island, and two of these projects are in Langford. So I so to get this um, baseline study done will give us an opportunity to jump into that game. And I just, I was fortunate enough to attend the first of the Affordable Housing Committee meetings in late July. And at that time, I walked away with this great document, which I used during my council, their election campaign, <laughs> which was the Souk Affordable Housing Report that staff whipped up for that meeting. Uh, it gives us a look at, you know, it shows the absolute predominance of single detached houses in this district, the lack of mixed, um, you know, the, mid, the, the middle housing, I think, council, you know, these various other options. And uh, so our, the consultant will be able to re receive that, I'm sure, along with um, our affordable housing and social housing policy of 2007, which also has a ton of really good info. So there's a good head start for whoever yep. this is person is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bateman. Councillor Parkinson. Through your worship. So we have the um, CRD uh, Regional Housing Trust Fund Commission that we sit on and there's 11 municipalities that participate in that. <clears throat> Excuse me, plus the island, Salt Spring Island. So we all put funding into this and we can take funding out of this too for different projects. So now that Councillor Logans has been put onto this committee, we can request funding from this as well. And they have given money for the Hope Center, they've given money for Air Manor. There are other projects that are going to be underway. So there will be things coming forward and I think that will be to our advantage as well. Yep. Councillor McMath. Um, the thirty-five thousand dollars, and in the essence of time, is it? Have you gotten any quotes from like a third party to do the work? Yes, thank you. Good question. Um, we originally thought ten, and that was a uh, misunderstanding. So we did have a look at uh, Queen Charlotte Island study, and also staff took a look or um, contacted a couple of other. Um, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. Agencies or uh, that have conducted the work, and, um, and I don't know. Our staff might be better to answer this question, but essentially, yes, this was uh, research to have an estimate of thirty-five thousand based on other studies that have been done that are similar to this, but um, ours may or may not be more robust. Yeah. I'm, if they're similar in price, then would it be pertinent to hire them so that they can focus solely on this project if staff is overwhelmed? And that is part of why we're trying to get a, yes, that's part of why we're trying to get a jump on this because as soon as uh, the bill passes, I imagine many other communities will be trying to get these consultants and other consultants who exactly. do it, yeah. and the resources may be very limited. So that is one of the highest reasons why we're trying to do this right away so that we can get um, at least a pick um, of different consultants instead of perhaps yeah. just one or two that might come up and, yeah. Yeah, good questions. Great. Okay, so I'd like to keep moving on here. So let's look at the different recommendations that are here. So we've done the first one. The second one is 
we've heard about the amount. So that is that council rescind resolution 2018-439. And that is as stated here that the affordable housing committee recommend council set aside a budget for an affordable housing needs assessment to meet the provincial requirement after the release of the affordable housing assessment guide and that funding up to $10,000 for the affordable housing needs assessment are allocated from bylaw number 259 housing reserve fund establishment bylaw 2006. So, motion to rescind, please. So Moved by Councillor Parkinson. Don't need you don't need a seconder. So, because we're still in committee of the hall. So we're rescinding, we already made a motion for 10,000. So we're rescinding that, and now we're going to put forward a different amount. Any discussion on the motion? See none, all those in favor? Opposed, it's carried unanimously. So then the next part then is that council directs staff to issue an RFP for a housing needs assessment in accordance with provincial guidelines and that council allocate up to 35,000 for the housing needs assessment with funding to come from the housing reserve fund. So Moved by Councillor McMath. Discussion on the motion. See none. All those in favor? Opposed, that's carried unanimously. Uh, so the next one here is a request that council continue an affordable housing committee with appropriate staff resourcing. Um, amendment? Sure. Um, and I, because I know that we have uh, the report coming forward with other committees, um, is it possible to uh, continue in principle until we receive that report? Can, like, and when you say in principle, like um, council continue the current or the that or perhaps that in principle, council continue an affordable housing committee. And then um, until council receives the full committee report. Right, right. Uh, yes. Yeah. As long as I understand that that's happening pretty soon. <laughs> that's, we've, we've made a request that, um, that that come for the December meeting, the listing of all committees and the like. And then it's up to you then to put forward your new terms of reference. For yes. that date. Yeah, exactly. So I can definitely get the uh, terms of reference before that date so that council can look at it in conjunction with the report on other committees. And um, it would just, I think it would be good for the committee to have a sense that council is just willing to continue. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. I think it's just even though at that date comes forward, there may still be other committees that will need to be formed once our strategic planning and field work and orientation and all that work is concluded. So it's by no means December is the be all end date. You have to pick one. It was just, uh, there was a request that uh, other committees that we've had over the years, so I've had staff bring up like the last five years of committees just so that you can see what we've had here in the district. It doesn't mean that they're good, they're bad, or there's something you wanna keep, it's just a resource. And then obviously some members of council may have an idea on what they have, but you could have them all for that date and at least some could launch and some we would still need to wait on. Yes, and it would be my understanding that this would hopefully be a committee that we uh, begin as of that date and immediately because it is a crisis in our community. I know, but we also need to consider advertising for new members and allowing new members of the public because essentially this committee has been dissolved. So it's the case of um, also opening up that opportunity. There are others that want to be involved and we have to go through a, that process. And it's Christmas anyway. <laughs> And my birthday. Anyway, Councillor St. Pierre, just make it about me for now. Go ahead. I was wondering about uh, what would be the process for actually uh, suggesting pilot projects or Sorry. microphone? <laughs> what would the actual process be for a noob councillor or for anybody else really to suggest new projects or pilot projects, potentially ways of using the funding that be available from the province or even just using resources that we have on hand? So, like a committee? No, let's say that you, uh, it was suggested to me during the election that uh, the UK has what they call council housing. They have what they call council housing and they've had that for a long time. Uh, a good chunk of all their social housing is actually owned by the council, managed by a hands-off organization. So they don't actually you know, tap into any money, they don't make any money off it. But it basically feeds into providing social housing on an ongoing basis. So this is like a, a, pro, a pilot project related to housing? Yes. Then you could um, approach the chair of that committee and ask to be a delegation to an upcoming meeting and share those ideas with the committee. Okay, so you put together a proposal of some kind, 
Well, similarly tonight, we had the Rotary Club do a delegation and, and made an appearance. They gave a, a brief presentation, and here was sort of their asks. You could do that exact same similar process to any, say in this case, housing to the housing committee and provide the committee members with some information in advance for them to re and then have a discussion about it. Councillor Logans? And uh, just to follow up, there, I believe there are local examples within the CRD as well of uh, council housing. Okay. Yeah. But just curious what the process is. That was just one example. I'm just curious, how do you do it? You just um, ask Councillor Logans when the meeting is happening and show up and speak to <laughs> and just say you have a great idea you want to share. And something like that would be a perfect example of the low-hanging fruit piece because we have um, perhaps other councillors but also other community groups who are doing things within our community already. So how can council assist with that moving forward? Would It, it would apply to a greater group but as well that, okay. yeah. Okay. So we have a motion. Um, is Kate looking for someone to move it then? Um, that is that the Committee of the Whole recommend that Council continue the Affordable Housing Committee with the, until, until the, I think, yeah, until the committee report is available for updating, right? Until, or until new terms of reference have been submitted would be appropriate. Um, Councillor Parkinson. Through your worship, so does that actually mean that the committee has not then disbanded? Well, it was automatically dissolved with the election. So that was a procedural question for a corporate officer. Like all of our committees are automatically dissolved with Correct. the election. So how, how, how <laughs> do we get to December 13th knowing that this committee is dissolved? What you've done is, is acceptable, sure. Okay. So this motion is acceptable and it was just sort of rise it up and, okay, good. Okay, someone prepared to move this? Move Councillor Beddoes has moved this motion. Any discussion on this motion? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, it's carried unanimously. And uh, just for the last one here, and that council make housing a priority in the upcoming strategic plan, is that maybe that council consider housing a priority? In the upcoming strategic plan, is consider a friendly amendment. This came from your committee, Councillor Logan. So I'm sort of <laughs> on you. Um, <laughs> I I think I can speak on behalf of the committee that that is not a friendly amendment, simply because it is such a crisis that we need it to be very important to this council and so the request of the committee would be that it is uh, a definite um, inclusion in the strategic plan I don't know if that means it needs to be, like it doesn't need to be you know but at least if it could be a bullet <laughs> that we include in it that would be important but yeah an overarching piece of it I don't know that's up to us when we have those discussions but at least have it as a bullet as an important thing that we need to consider um, whenever we make a decision at council in the next four years. And, and I totally appreciate where you're coming from. It's just I'd like, and I don't disagree or even agree either way, it's just I'd like to start that process and for all of us together to set priorities because they are coming everywhere. And, and yes, I agree that we're in a crisis. I just don't, without having started a process, I just don't want to say yes, we will do that and then you know, there's another meeting and oh, well, we're going to do that too and then we're going to do that too and, and we'll do that and then we haven't started the process but our, why are we even bothering because the priorities have already been set. So it's like, you know, maybe that's okay but uh, I think we'll sort of just, you know, like to take this all in and set the groundwork from there. Other I'm, thoughts? I move the recommendation. Okay. Then that is that... Um, where are we here? I can't read that. Sorry. <laughs> I just no. I it's just I might need glasses. Um, that council make and that council make housing a priority in the upcoming strategic plan. So that's been moved. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously, I guess. Okay. 
kind of pinched here, but that's okay. And now we will resolve out of committee of the whole. Moved by Councillor Logan. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. So now, sitting as council, I would just like to then uh, look, we'll just address this right now, is that we that we ad adopt these all in one block. So moved. Moved by Councillor Parkinson, seconded by Councillor Beddoes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Okay. All right. Very good. So thank you, everyone, members of the public, for your participation and for attending tonight. And item 10.2. Uh, ALC subdivision 2727 Phillips Road. Me again. <clears throat> uh, so we're looking at an ALC subdivision, just to be very clear. Um, we're talking about a subdivision, not an exclusion, so nothing is being considered to be out of the ALC. The applicant has applied to subdivide Agricultural Land Reserve, ALR, to create one new lot at 2727 Phillips Road upon which to build a small house and retire. A council resolution must accompany this application if it is forwarded to the ALC. Local government has the discretion to forward or not forward applications to the ALC pursuant to Section 25, Subsection 3, and Section 30, Subsection 4 of the Agricultural Land Commission Act. If council exercises its authority and does not support the application, the application proceeds no further and will not be considered by the ALC. If council supports the approval of this ALC subdivision application and subsequent ALC approval is granted, the owners may then apply to have their subdivision considered by the district approving officer. The approving officer cannot consider the subdivision until after the ALC has approved. This proposed subdivision is to provide a residence for a relative under Section 514 of the Local Government Act, and all applicable legislative requirements will be addressed at the time of consideration. On the bottom of this slide, I've highlighted where we are and the next upcoming steps. So we're at the local government review and resolution to the ALC. The ALC will then review and make a decision, and then the applicant would come back for a subdivision application to the district. The subject property is approximately 7.8 7 .8 hectares or 19.3 acres in size. Uh, currently, 3.5 hectares is used for grazing land for 25 sheep, and 0.25 hectares is used for the growing of fruits and vegetables. The current house, driveway, and garden area use about 0.5 hectares. This subdivision application is for a 0.5 hectare lot on the northwest side of the property, which fronts Phillips Road. The property is zoned Small Scale Agriculture, RU3, and is designated Agriculture in the OCP. The surrounding land uses include watershed, forest, and agriculture, RU1, and rural, RU2. I've highlighted the proposed new lot in red on the screen. This subdivision application allows for the continued use of the farm with minimal impacts to agriculture and food security, and allows for some infill housing in which a retired couple can independently live. Staff recommends that Council forward this application to the ALC with a recommendation for approval. Um, and the applicant, David Parsons, in, is in attendance if you have any questions for him. Thank you. Councillor Parkinson. Through your worship, I, I move the recommendation. Okay, recommendation's been moved. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Beddoes. Questions, comments? Seems very straightforward to me. Councillor Logans? Um, just a simple question through you to staff, if I may. Um, we've heard that people want to retire and build a small house before. And when we've seen the plans, it's been quite the opposite of that. So I know it's very subjective. I just want to know, uh, in terms of process, um, when do we get to see that? Is that? Would that be during the... Um, does that plan go to the ALC for review? Or do we see that when they come back after the ALC, if the ALC provides... Or approves it. <laughs> uh, through your worship to Councillor Loggins, we would not see that because that's a subdivision application, so you as council would not be approving that. It goes to the district approving officer. The zoning would carry through, so this would be an RU3 lot. The setbacks all apply everything that's in our zoning bylaw, um, and this is a 0.5 hectare lot, so uh, you're worried about perhaps a, the ALR mansions or... Uh, <laughs> 
um, should it shouldn't apply to this. Okay, thank you. Um, I am uh, happy with this, and I'll, I'll uh, vote in favor of it. And I'm, I just wanted to also comment that I am happy with the location, uh, as it does fit with the neighborhood there. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? See none. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Ten point three: the salmon restoration society fees. So here you may know, um, actually I'll turn this over to staff, but you may know that the Juan de Fuca Salmon Restoration Society is uh, relocating the Jack Brooks Hatchery into that area there, which is very exciting for our community. So there has been a request here that, um, that we consider waiving the building permit fees. There was just a question I had in the paragraph here. So just... Um, in the paragraph above budget and financial impacts, the last sentence, it says, staff do, in brackets, or similar assessment to help staff determine. I don't understand that sentence, whether there will be any significant increase in traffic on the road. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I don't understand it either. <laughs> um, I'm surprised it got approved with that wording in it, actually, because we do send them reports around for review. Um, so I will look into that. Um, regardless, what it was trying to say was uh, that we staff don't have a way to determine the traffic impact on the road that this project uh, may have. So the applicant could um, provide a study to help us determine that, and then we may be in a position to uh, recommend that counts that well. We may not have to apply DCC fees, but we can't determine that ourselves and. Um, it, it's just something we require. If it, DCC fees are meant to, you know, cover the cost of, of capital cost burden to the community from new development, and this is an, you know, could attract some extra visitors to the property and on the road, and therefore we would be um, proper to be collecting DCC fees. Another option is that council, we would still collect them and council could consider a grant back to the society for the amount of the DCC fees, but they would not be able to waive the DCC fees. So. Okay, so with this here then, um, uh, should council deal with the building permit fees, then staff and the applicant will be continuing to have discussion about the development cost charges and whether or not they're applicable. So then at that time perhaps the applicant can either give some more information and then staff could make the determination whether to apply them and if they do need to be applied then just bring it back to council then we can consider then a, putting a grant against the project or if they provide further information and you make the call that they aren't warranted then then that's that that's correct I I'm not sure how much a report like that would cost um, if it's couple of thousand dollars five thousand dollars for that kind of traffic study um, but that's something that again council consider providing a grant for yeah. for that purpose if if they choose once we find out how much it is I can come back with another report if council wishes I think if you can just communicate back to the applicant that we've done this and then maybe just some more clarity on what they anticipate because mm -hmm. they're all like with the the um, the demonstrations demonstration center that's there there's some traffic sometimes and then there's no traffic at all so by adding this would it add some or mm -hmm. maybe not and maybe it's just not material but I don't yeah I, I don't know enough about it to you, you would need to get that information yeah. from the applicant and and just take it from there and then just bring it back to us when it or yep. So I'll ask staff to, to yeah. um, look into that. The amount of the fees, just so you're aware, is about $26,000. So for the, and that would for just the DC, that's only roads, of course. There's no sewer right. on Super River Road. So. so the sewer would not be applicable. It Correct. would just only be yeah. for roads. But I think if, if you could just have staff have a further conversation and then yeah. let us know um, how the, the change would be, and we can just mm -hmm. take it from there. Sounds good. Okay, so on the first part, Councillor Parkinson. So I move that Council waive the building permit fee of 5862 for the Juan de Fuca Salmon Restoration Society's Jack Brooks Hatchery Project at 2895 Sioux River Road. Okay, do I have a seconder? 
Seconded by Councillor McMath. Uh, any further discussion? See none. Uh, I'll Councillor. Say, thanks. Um, sure. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think that the traffic input impact study is, is important. I, I'm thinking of the Quatsi Salmon Stewardship Center up in Port Hardy, and that's quite a significant tourist attraction up there, I believe, or it was when I visited it five years ago. There's, I think there's 15 hatcheries on the island, and most of them are private. So this one, this is a really quite remarkable center already, and we're, we're getting this new $840,000 project. Um, so yeah, and absolutely, let's waive the, the permit fees and, and say hurrah. I'll also just quickly note, Jack Brooks is without the E, just for, for the record there. Thank you. Thank you very much, okay. Councillor Bateman. That's good. Okay, any further discussion? See none. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. 10.4. Councillor Logans? Um, I'm just going to declare a conflict as I am the Executive Director of the EMCS Society, which is assisting with the application. Okay, thank you. We will come find you. Councillor Bateman? And I am the past president of the EMCS Society and on the current board, so I'll join Ebony. Okay, well, come find if company. Councillor Beddows? No, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, very good. So just wait a moment here. And then, uh, Mr. Blackhall, are you speaking to this? Yes, Your Worship. Um, so, this is a the uh, Souk Region Community Health Network um, age friendly committee um, wishing to submit on behalf of the district a uh, grant application for. Uh, the UBCM Age Friendly Communities Stream 2 grant, um, so $15,000 grant application and uh, requires um, council endorsement, which is why you have a report in front of you. Okay, fairly straightforward. Councillor Parkinson. Move recommendation. Move recommendation. Looking for a seconder. Councillor Beddows. Discussion on the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Both parts? Yes, please. Okay. Anything? See none. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Thank you. And if we could have the councillors returned. How far did they travel? Not a refreshment break. Okay, very good. Eleven point one, Souk Program of the Arts Spa Committee update. I'll turn this over to Com Councillor Parkinson, please. Through your worship, uh, just so that our council is informed, these are ongoing projects that have been approved by the previous council for the Souk Program for the Arts. So there are actually seven projects in place, right, or six projects in place right now that are continuing. And I have um, asked the committee members who are on it if they wish to stay on this committee or if they're stepping down, they'd all like to stay on the committee. So I'm hoping that as the affordable housing, we can carry on with working on our projects right now. And then when we form the new committees again, we can add more people to it. Okay. Councillor Logans? I'm wondering if it's appropriate that we make a similar motion where we can continue this until the uh, the committees are looked at. Yep. Thank you, staff, for deciphering that. <laughs> I think the other thing to consider, too, is that while we are expecting our first committee report in December, it's a report for information that... Um, you know that really you might just want to receive and consider so then I would suggest that just to look at other the motion is that those committees remain well we said until new terms have been adopted yes 
Right. Okay, so then that would carry us through potentially into the new year as needed until we formalize what we want as all the committees. So it was just the case in December of just having some briefing material, but that doesn't mean that you'll come up with a committee that you want. Like I think that's unrealistic. That's unfair pressure even. Like we'd want to set our priorities and then also determine what sort of a committee would assist us in realizing those. So not really like come, come December, you have to have your committee sorted. So these should just flow until new terms have been submitted and then we can look, okay, here's what we want to do and now are we resourced to actually deliver this. Councillor Parkinson? Uh, thank you for that, Your Worship. Um, seeing as these are all ongoing projects and the f finances have already been approved, so it's good that we carry on making sure that they're done previously, yeah. right? My other question would be um, to, if you would please put on the uh, CRD uh, art support appointment on the for the upcoming committees yes we we're have discussed that today but it's not on that's just a note um, to staff when we get that liaison report if you can add that one to the liaison report thank you okay um, very good um, well thank you for your work and to your volunteers Councillor Parkinson because these are all ongoing here and uh, I think just as as you reach completion or whatever just let us know mm -hmm. Uh, so we can celebrate your success with you on that. Okay, so I'll just look for a motion uh, for someone to move. Moved by Councillor Logans and se seconded by Councillor Parkinson. Discussion on this motion. Yes. Sorry, I'll move that the council continue the SUC program of the Arts Spa Committee until new terms of reference have been adopted. Perfect. So moved and seconded. Any further discussion on this? See none. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried unanimously. 11.2, 2018 general local election. I'll turn this over to staff. That's <laughs> it's all good, you say. So there's just sort of the declaration of the official results here uh, that has come forward. So here for information or for to receive, Councilor Parkinson? Move recommendation that Council receive report. Okay. So that's moving both of them? Yes. Okay. So moved and seconded as stated there that the declaration of the official results for 2018 general local election be received for information in accordance with the requirements of Section 158 of the Local Government Act and that Council receive this report for information. Okay, and this is usually posted on our website in the election section or something? Do we have an election yeah, section? Yeah, the results are posted on the website. Okay. And then the report actually has to be uh, uh, presented to council as a formality under the Okay. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried unanimously. You're opposed? Quick oh, quick comments. I wanted to thank the, uh, the chief election officer and the electoral assistants because just com contrasting as a candidate how it was in 2014 versus 2018 it was quite a, a step up so I just wanted to acknowledge um, yeah, well the well service done. that was delivered to us candidates thank you okay thank you Councillor Bateman okay new business item 12 we have number one festivals of trees Councillor Parkinson um, are we doing that one first before the, uh... new business okay, thank you. So, um, through your worship, I would like to request that the district is to participate in the Festival of Trees. We have participated in the past six years or so with it. It's been going on for 10 years. And with this one, it's, it's always been the trees have been in Sea Park, and people purchase a tree for $250, and the money goes to the BC Children's Hospital Foundation. And we have numerous children in our community who have had to use this service. So I think it's a really good project that we should participate in. This year, it's uh, changed a little bit. We've included the fire department is helping out, and the fire department has two members that are on the committee with us. And I'm there with Elizabeth from Sea Park. And we've also, instead of just having it at Sea Park, where it only holds 12 trees, where the lions and rotary and the schools all decorate trees there, 
we are now going to be doing a map and we've gone around town asking businesses to par participate in it and they will decorate their own tree and people can follow the map through town and it will bring uh, people into the shops and I would like to see that if the district agrees to have a tree that we have the tree decorated at the front door so that people coming in the district can vote on the trees here in the district and will be part of the map. So what I would like to request is uh, $250 for the um, district suit to participate. Okay. And that would be my motion. Okay, so that and the I have the, oh, sorry, I have the application form here too for Sarah to fill out, or whomever. Miss Temple. Miss Temple, sorry. Corporate services. So is that, um, Mr. Blackhall, like for the tree to, to live in our foyer? That's, That's not a real can you make that work? Uh, your worship, I'll check with the fire chief just to make sure there's no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real tree. I will support uh, a tree being in there as long as it's uh, watered properly and uh, it's looked it's after and it's in an appropriate tree. spot. So water, so no candles on the tree. Yeah, as long as it's in compliance with the fire code and the regulations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, fire chief. <laughs> Through your worship, the fire department is also going to have a tree too, and they don't. Most trees aren't real trees. Just saying. Okay, and so, Councillor Parkinson, do you and your volunteers decorate this tree, or how is it? The district of Souk, actually, the staff decorated it last year for okay. the one that was out at Sea Park because we participated at Sea Park. But I would rather have it at the front door, and we've always had a tree at the front door anyhow. Okay. Well, so, this could be quite fun. Yeah. Okay. So um, if staff would like to do it, great. If council and staff would like to do it together, that would be wonderful. Thank and let you. us know if, if we can help with the decorations. Councillor Beddoes? No, I believe that's a $250 donation to do it, correct? Yes. Do you need some funds to buy decorations for the tree, or do you just scrounge them? Through your worship. We have decorations and actually staff actually handmade them all last year. So I'm not sure what their process would be for doing it. Yeah. Yeah, they were handmade, so that was really nice. Very creative. Okay. And the funding, would that come from council contingency? Okay. Okay, so that's been moved. Is there a seconder for this motion? Seconded by Councillor Beddoes. And... Um, and staff could just reach out to to us if we can assist or, or just enjoy the tree okay all those in favor opposed it's carried unanimously thank you item number two under new business was the mayor's new year's levy through your worship um we have been hosting the mayor's new year's levy for the, actually for the past three mayors i have organized it for each one and we did it for the last four years and we would like to proceed again this year with the mayor's new year's levy and for this one i would like to see um, us being more creative in what we're doing this will be our 20th anniversary for incorporation of the district of souk so it'll be the first day of us starting our new year and 20 year celebration so at the previous um levies we've always had we've had entertainment we've had um, the harmonies project perform which is an after-school program for youth who are children learning to play the strings and the drum line so I would like to request that well I'll put it all together anyhow <laughs> so we have different people promoting or participating in the program and um, I would like to request that this year that we ask for $2,500 and if we do not spend that amount, that is perfectly fine, but just in case. Okay. Councillor Logans? Um, did we have uh, funds set aside for events? I thought we put that in the last budget. Yeah. Yep, uh, through your worship to Councillor Logans. We have uh, 10,000 for events, and then we have separate for some others, Canada Day, et cetera. So that the funds would come from the event line? Okay. And it's, uh, for, it starts at 10 o'clock until noon. And that way it doesn't interfere with other levies going on in town because the Legion puts one on, on as well. So theirs starts at 12, so we kind of, they come here, we go there sort of thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Councillor Parkinson. It's great for me, I just get to show up. <laughs> She's usually phoning me <laughs> on your way. 
It's New Year's Day. Okay. Anyway, um, so okay. I have a motion. Is there a seconded? Seconder seconded by Councillor Logans. Of course, all of councils invited. Last year, the premier attended. It was really nice. And our MP Randall Garrison as well. Okay. So I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. It's on obviously on January first. Uh, the other one was the Santa Parade. Um, I just wanted confirmation of the date and time. If someone could give me the date and time. December 2nd. I believe it's on uh, December 2nd at 5 p.m. And then we're all to muster sort of at Souk Elementary School? Okay. Okay, there was just some discussion about this gather. Yeah, pardon me, gather. Um, just with a new council, we, we all sort of walked together. We've done different things. We've decorated vehicles, ridden in vehicles, or just walked. Typically, it's nice to just walk. Uh, we've been moved to the front of the parade, which is great, um, because now that we have the Christmas tree, it lights up when we hit it. So it's nicer that it's lit earlier rather than later. Um, and just would like some help handing out candy. So I've already asked Councillor St. Pierre, but if there's other um, children that could assist us with this, I mean, certainly councillors are welcome to carry candy to hand out, but we're at the front. We're going to slow down the parade. You'll get into conversations and just slow the whole thing down, and we're all stretched out in it. <coughs> so what you're asking for is some children to march with us to give out To candy? hand out the candy. So I could use my grandkids? If yes. You yeah, it, it's just easier, and then they'll start with us, but then and then run back and whatever. And sure. it's just if you have a Santa hat, get a hat, those sorts of things. So anyone want to walk with us? Be not just putting anyone in the audience on the spot or anything, but just love to have you um, and dress warmly. Wear wear a nice Santa hat or something. Councillor Parkinson. And then, you know, at least when you're at the end, um, you can watch the parade go. Or because we're at the beginning, we can actually see the parade. Because sometimes when you're in the middle, you don't get to see it. It's kind of disappointing. I would just like to let everybody know as well that the Legion always is um, serving hot chocolate and cookies after the parade. Because we end up around there. I, yeah. I, I believe that at the town centre that they're going to be doing the same thing. So that's interesting that the Legion's doing it too. Well, you need both. There's so many people. Okay. There's a good draw. We don't have a problem with it. And then uh, obvious, um, if staff could locate the band. We have a district banner somewhere. There's some talk maybe that um, a couple of councillors could carry the banner. If, no? Someone could. But you, you need two people to carry. You can't carry it on your own, Councillor Parkinson. Um, may I just make a comment back to the Mayor's New Year's levy? Not till we're, we're done from the Santa Parade. Uh, no, it's just while it's in my mind. Just for your book to sign in, if they could find it. Yes, we have a guest book somewhere. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Santa Parade. Okay. All right, so that's when it is. Thank you. Okay, correspondence, item 13. We have items from October 1st to November 5th. And there's quite a few here uh, that you may want to look at. Just um, Sometimes we just extract different ones out of it to discuss or move action on, or we, and then we can receive the rest. So if there's anything here, well maybe just go quickly in order, unless there's... Um, Ones in particular? Is there ones that council would like to? Okay, Councillor Bateman. Well, I've, I've highlighted A, C, E, H, I, and O. A, C, E, H, what? A, C, E, H, I, and O. Okay, are there any others? So how about um, we receive the okay uh, remainder is a block except for item P. There was an invitation. We'll extract item P as well, and then uh, receive the rest as a to re to receive, and then we'll ex go through the others individually. So a motion to receive and file okay. for remainder by Councillor Parkinson, seconded by Councillor Logans. All those in favor? 
Opposed? Motion's carried. So item A, Councillor Bateman, letter from the Victoria Urban well, Reconciliation Dialogue. With this one, I just wanted to highlight that uh, this committee, the Victoria Urban Reconciliation Dialogue, which is part of the Victoria Native Friendship Centre, uh, is seeking um, involvement by our municipality and constituents. Um, I'm not sure what that would look like, but I did want to highlight that this is a... Um, a reconciliation group that is wanting to involve Souk as part of the, and of course we do have the Souk Souk uh, reconciliation group meeting on a monthly basis. So, um. so perhaps with this one, then maybe staff, because we have the liaison report coming up. Could you reach out to this group and just get some more information mm -hmm. about dates and times, locations, frequency, all of that. And then yeah. when we receive that, then at least you'll have that information and that we'd be looking, we do have liaison appointments and we just need to look at dates. I mean, if it's if they meet at the same time of council or whatever, right? So we just need to have a sense of when that might be. So Jack and then we can bring that. Um, so we'll just refer this to staff for now, okay? Item C is, Scrolling back and forth here. Letter from the Ministry of Attorney General of Cannabis Retail Licensing. Councillor Bateman? I just wanted to bring this up because I'm curious of how the district is handling um, our three existing independent stores, and I'm unclear. So I was hoping for some. So dialogues. my understanding right now is that um, the various retailers are working, talking with our staff. They're going through the provincial licensing process right now, and we have a report coming to us uh, jointly from various departments in the near future. And that might clear the haze that okay. you currently are experiencing. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Black. Right. Yes. Thank you, Worship. I can add to that. The, um, uh, licenses come from the province to our license officer, who is our bylaw officer. Um, they, we have asked the province to carry out their fit and proper assessment first before we um, decide what we are going to do. Council will need to make provide some direction to staff as as to what um, council wishes to do with these applications. Currently, we don't have a means really to accept them. Um, so therefore, we've, the fit and proper assessment has to be done anyway, so let's get that done first. And then by that time, we'll ha hopefully have a uh, report from staff to council, which will look at not just the licensing issues, but um, planning issues as well. So. Okay. 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 Thank you. So motion to receive that item, please. So. Moved by Councillor Parkinson, seconded by Councillor Lo Logans. All those in favor? Oppose, and that's carried unanimously. Um, so the next one is H, email from Souk School District, invitation to inaugural meeting and swearing in. Councillor Parkinson? I also would like to speak to that one. Um, I had sent off an invitation saying I'd attend, not realizing that tonight was our council meeting. Yeah. So um, I understand that other fellow councillors are replied as well. Um, and um, maybe we could... Um, well, I'll send out my own letter saying I'm sorry I didn't attend. <laughs> so I did email them and advise that it's conflicting with a regularly scheduled meeting so they would know that. Um, I would like us to have some sort of a meeting with the school district trustees so that we can hear about what um, their plans are and what's happening. Obviously the schools impact our community greatly in a number of ways so perhaps um, if we can look at adding this to the list of many lists that we have, but it's part of sort of the field work mm -hmm. is meeting with other community stakeholders mm -hmm. and the school trustees being mm -hmm. an important one to us. So sometime likely in the new year, given everyone's schedules there. Okay. So motion to receive and did you have anything else with this? Council oh, meeting? I was just wondering protocols. I, I don't want to sound like Mr. Bright side or sunny side out, but is it, is it necessary or a, an idea to extend our congratulations to the, the three trustees uh, formally in a yes. situation like this to Mr. Phillips and Margot Swinburneson and Allison Watson? How about let's send cards, please? Okay. Congratulatory cards. How about that? Okay. Very good. Motion to receive by Councillor Parkinson, seconded by Councillor Beddoes. All those in favor? Opposed motions carried. 
I, email from Sarah Galbraith, Church Road Crosswalk Concern. So I'm going to lead off on this. So our road lines and crosswalks are in terrible condition all over Souk. We have um, allocated funds. We have a contractor that has accepted the work and we're waiting for that contractor's availability now. So there's a specific type of um, elastomeric, I think that's the right word. It's a type of paint with very good stain power, reflectiveness and all that. And there's only a few contractors that are doing this. So we're in the queue. It's very unfortunate because we wanted to have this done by like before the heavy rain started and now we're into that season. So that's, we're waiting right now for this, but it's, it's I totally get it's It's been just very poor conditions all around town and, and worsening. But as far as I understand from talking to engineering staff, they're following up and we're just trying to get them out here. Mr. Parkinson? Through your worship, in regards to this one, um, it's also a problem with the lights that's at the road there. And I know the, the light is owned by Hydro, I think. I was just wondering if we have followed up on that because the light doesn't come on either. It stays okay. off for a period of time and then comes back on. So that was a real concern there. And um, I would like to see that the district send um, Sarah Galbraith a letter stating that we're looking into it, that we have to wait for the uh, people to come by and use the appropriate paint on it. Her husband did get hit. So I'm thinking that we should let her know that we're actually doing what we should be doing and getting the light yeah. and the painting done. Yeah, so because the email's redacted, if staff could respond back and just let them know that we've received this, we're aware of it, we're, Working and then look it. into the light, the light issue. There as well. Right, to rectify her concerns, because that's a terrible. Mm -hmm. It's just getting so bad There's right no now. Well, and even on some roads, like vehicles are driving right down the middle of the road because they don't know where they're all over the center line. Like it's, it's, it's just a mess. And this is where our engineering staff has been reaching out to other municipalities to find ways to partner so that they can in increase the bid size and that might attract more people willing to bid on it because it's not just this one small job when they're looking at much larger ones and that might help draw more interest here. I almost think at some point we need to like let's just bring line painting in house because it's just we go through this all the time. So something to think about Mr. Blackhall it's just <laughs> I think it's very be frustrating you know that that it's just that this happens Brenda you have a spray gun don't you <laughs> I do <She> does <laughs> okay so we have that council direct staff to respond to Sarah Galbraith regarding efforts to rectify our concerns regarding lighting and crosswalk lines at church road and through road intersection okay so I'd like to move that please move. moved by Councillor McMath and seconded by Councillor Parkinson all those in favor opposed is carrying it huh oh, sorry okay I'm just trying to move on um, <laughs> I and O. Oh, um, letter from Strata, VIS 2633, Septic and Sewer Servicing. Item O here. Councillor Bateman. Okay, I just wanted to bring this one up because it's, it's such a big issue. I know there's a staff report incoming on the, uh, or at least the previous council requested one, on the possible expansion of the sewer system. And I wanted to remark on our orientation session last Thursday and Mr. Skidmore, the manager of the wastewater treatment plant, um, laid out a series of steps that m would necessarily need to precede any discussion of taking um, pipes across, across the river to service the First Nation, uh, protect the environmental health of the harbor, um, and, and certainly those residential properties that Mr. Dexter is referring to and the things I learned about infiltration issues um, you know the, the 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 plant is at 65 percent capacity I believe but during these heavy rain events like if it keeps raining as it does tonight um, that plant gets gets overwhelmed um, the, what we heard the other day was um, job one is to upgrade the treatment plant it, it can be doubled in size um, to handle uh, extra daily flow. Uh, anyway, there's so much to learn on this subject and uh, I'm really looking forward to the field trips that Mayor Tate is organizing for us so that we can learn more about this. 
but Mr. Dexter's point is really well taken. He's in a situation where um, the, the residents of Glen Idle Manor will will need to make a major investment. And um, yeah, I look forward to future discussion around this. Thank you. Excellent, Councillor Parkinson. So I was also had this one on my list to bring up, and I think that um, they do the testing of the water down there. And from the areas that they do it, they get no readings at all. And it is believed by a number of people that it should, the results should be taken from different areas down on the Caltassen Road area and down, down Glen Idle to get a more accurate reading. I know that from 2005 to 2008, Caltassen was the worst area for pollution into the ocean. But because they've moved the location of the readings, that's no longer the case, but I'm sure that if it goes back to where it was before, we would see that it's really bad down there, and more so than up in the Whiff and Spit area. I think we'll get information on that, that there's several places where they test. It's just they don't always test the same location every year. So that's why different readings lead to different samples, even if it's the same geographic area, but they do go back. So that could be part of it. So anyway, we'll get more information on this and then can sort of lay out what our strategy is for this. So for now, just be looking to receive and file. We have receipt by Councillor Logan, seconded by Councillor St. Pierre. Any further, all those in favor? Opposed, it's carried unanimously. And the last one that I pulled was item P. I'm just looking, uh, if staff could provide me with Ms. Gordon's contact information and then I can, um, or just forward, if you could forward her email to me, then I can reply back and just look if I can attend this event. And then otherwise it's a motion to receive by Councillor Logans and seconded by Councillor Parkinson. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. And Council verbal reports. Councillor Logans. Um, just a quick one. Uh, congrats to all my colleagues. And also, um, there is an event that you may be interested in that I just found on my internet searches. <laughs> and it's from BC Healthy Communities, which is an awesome um, community group based out of Victoria. And um, the event is called Physical Activity for All, Tools and Approaches for Equity in Active Communities. So as we look at our transportation plan and as, as we look at our parks and trails plan, I thought this would be excellent to attend. I'll be there. It is a free event and um, it's on Tuesday, November 20th from 5 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. It's at a place called Sunset Labs, which is just behind Value Village. It's like an art and music venue. And the address is 401 Herald Street. So I think you can um, RSVP by getting a ticket just off Eventbrite. That's how I did it. Uh, feel free to contact me if you want the link. But um, it is just a public event, although I thought very specific to our community. <laughs> if you just want to maybe forward it out, yep, that'd be great. Do. Thank you. Councillor Parkinson. I'd just like to say that Councillor Logans and I attended the uh, fire department's uh, banquet, and I would like to congratulate everybody in the fire department on such a wonderful job and great all the things that they do for us. Thank you. Are there comments from members of council? Just happy to be here. It's great. <laughs> great learning curve, I must say, the last few days. Oh, turn your microphone back on. And uh, I want to thank the two uh, uh, councillors from uh, the previous council for their assistance in taking some of these, getting to understand the process. So thank you, too. So I, I, I'll echo that, Al. Yeah, it's a learning curve. And, and it began for me uh, as the uh, appointee to the Vancouver Island Regional Library Board on Friday when at short notice <laughs> Mr. Blackhall swung by and picked me up and off we, we drove to, to Nanaimo to meet with um, the VIRL Executive Director Rosemary Bona Bonanno. Bonanno, B-O-N-A-N-N-O, Britt and Director of Finance, <laughs> Joel Adams. And um, so things are, things are moving forward. Um, they, you know, they were delayed this year to get, get things started as promised because there were some asbestos issues in three 
three uh, libraries up in the North Island, and those WorkSafe BC insists those be dealt with immediately. So we were bumped. Um, but we are uh, going to go ahead next year. I say we, they, are going to go ahead next year. They're putting $7.5 million into this project. It was budgeted at $6 million back in 2015-16, and yet construction costs have, have risen so dramatically. Apparently, construction cost escalation rate in BC this year could be as high as 12%, uh, and that's down to, um, anyway, on I could go. But it's exciting, and we are, we are giving uh, a, an acre of Lot A to the library. We're leasing it to them, and those arrangements are all being worked out by staff, and um, yeah, it's exciting. So hope that they didn't promise a date for completion. But uh, I think we've waited maybe close to 15 years now, so we can wait, a few, you know, maybe not years, but at least another year. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bateman. Other members of council? This time? Any comments? I'd like to say thank you to uh, everyone. Most, mostly, I think, uh, the people that seem to filter into the stick. Uh, there was <laughs> it was interesting. I think uh, we're going to have to watch out for the stick because uh, we might read quorum way too often that way. Uh, but it was wonderful actually having a chance to discuss uh, things very briefly but trying to calm ourselves down as we got to this meeting. And uh, I really appreciate everyone that we're working with. Thank you. Any comments, Councillor McMath? I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I haven't spoken yet. Uh, but thank you. Um, just uh, thanks to everyone for attending and marching in the Remembrance Day Parade. Uh, it's the first time since I've been on council that all of council marched together. So to me, that, that meant a great deal, and it was nice to be uh, alongside with our fire department and our, our CMP as well, just behind and, and uh, supporting the veterans. So yeah, thank you to everyone. The people in public appreciate us there. Absolutely. Together. It's very important. It is. It's very important for our community, and, and I appreciate the togetherness. So another opportunity will come, of course, with the Santa Parade. Don't have to march. Just walk. Uh, and also um, thanks to, yeah, to everyone. That's great. Uh, we have one more item. A notice of motion is coming forward from Councillor Parkinson. <laughs> through, through your worship, I'd like to put forward a notice of motion that council directs staff to prepare a report for a tree protection bylaw. So that's um, not to be discussed. It's just here for notice, and then this will come forward to our next regular council meeting. Okay, and then there's no in camera, so notion to adjourn, Councillor, by <laughs> Councillor McMath, and seconded by Councillor Beddoes. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you, everyone. Hey, baby.